A ole, a hila hila, hone hone, a ole pilikia, a ole, a hila hila, hone hone, a ole pilikia. It's breakfast with Bob and Pacho Man. Oh, we are brought to you by Hoka One One by Polar by You Can. VeloFix, Norma Tech Active Canyon, Form Goggles, Amp Human, and Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai. We'll be doing our championship event on Sunday morning and celebrating 10 years at beautiful Huggles on the Rocks. My next guest, Laura Siddle, who has been 15th here in Kona, and the woman who just won the Paratriathlon World Championship in Lausanne, Lauren Parker. Yeah. Look at you with all your fans here. They just came here. They're like, we don't care about Poncho Man. We're here for Lauren. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and you're having fun being back here? I mean, you were age group athlete here in 2015, finishing silver medal. Yeah, yeah. Silver in 2015 as an age grouper. And then in 2016, went pro. Yep. And then in 2017, on April 18th, Lauren was... Getting ready for her first Ironman as a pro, April 18th, 2017. Both tires flat at the same time. Lauren went to the guardrail and was paralyzed from the waist down. But that was step one. And then a couple months later, we were chatting on the radio. And Lauren goes, I got to get back in the triathlon. I'm like, well, if you want to get back in the triathlon, it starts at the San Diego Triathlon Challenge, our Challenge Athlete event in San Diego in October. She checked herself out of rehab, flew to San Diego, and was there with... 180 other challenge athletes and less than a year later she took a bronze medal at the commonwealth games and as i just mentioned won a world championship in lausanne less than two years after being injured thank you and when you went to that ironman australia two years ago one of the people you were going to be racing was laura siddle and laura won that race correct yeah that's right yeah that was my first uh, first win and Ironman win. Were you friends at that point? No, I mean, I, I knew of Lauren's name. Um, I knew she was one of these up-and-coming athletes that I had to be watching out for in the all race. All the time. Yeah, all the time. Um, but no, ha we hadn't met at that point. And, um, but obviously heard about the accident just 10 days or so before the race. And yeah. it just it hit me pretty bad. And then, I mean, I was fortunate to go on to win. Um, but wanted to reach out and make contact with Lauren. So I, on my way back from Port Macquarie, I drove back to Sydney and went and visited Lauren in hospital just a few days, what was it, two or three weeks after the accident. And that's the first time we met. And you guys have become close friends. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And Lauren, how important was that to have Laura come and visit you at that point? Yeah, like to have someone, uh, a, a pro athlete that I was going to race that didn't even know me to want to come and, you know, spend time and visit me at the hospital you know, meant so much. It blew me away. And, you know, I'm so thankful that we've got a, a great friendship. Well, and the, then the next step was we had the San Diego Triathlon Challenge that you were coming to for the first time. And Laura, coming off of Ironman, said, I'm coming to San Diego to be with you. And you guys were together. And what, what did you guys take away from that weekend? Because Lauren's there and she's a challenge athlete, but there's 180 others. And you're... You're learning a lot from not just the athletes, but the mentors and parents and everyone else. Yeah, it was a very special weekend um, to have Laura come and, you know, participate in the triathlon with me. You know, it was very special. But when I arrived in San Diego for the, the triathlon, I, it blew me away, you know, seeing other athletes that were in worse, worse off, that were worse off than me that had had accidents and injuries little kids with without arms and legs uh smiling and, and 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 happy and that's one thing i noticed that everyone was happy and i thought that well if they can participate in triathlon and be happy then then so can i if they can do it then i can do it and that's where my inspiration for triathlon came back again and i, I went back to australia from there and got straight back into training and got a hand cycle got a racing chair got some uh uh, little little training sessions. How different is it racing now than it was when you're an able body athlete? It's so different. You know, you know, when I first got into the hand cycle and racing chair, having to use my arms at first, I absolutely hated it. I didn't want to use my arms. And 
but I just had to accept that and I, I, I trained really hard for months and months and got better at it, got stronger and, you know, being out on the Queen K, you know, this week, you know, I just love it. I just love it here at Kona and I want to come back here and race again. And, um, but yeah, uh, I'm still building my arms up. I'm still getting stronger and right. um, mu much different than an able-bodied bike, yeah. And, and one of the tough things you've been dealing with, it's one thing to be paralyzed, but you've also had a, a number of setbacks where you'll have fluid buildup in your spine and you'll have to go back in for surgery. How many times has that happened? I've had uh, another five spinal cord operations since my accident. You know, and one of those operations, I was, I was rushed in for an eight-hour surgery because of fluid build up in my spine that traveled up to my neck. And I actually lost feeling down my right arm and loss of temperature control in my right hand and I still haven't regained that feeling. That hasn't back. come back no. yet. So it's something else that I've just have to have to accept and have move to on. deal yeah. with. You're now that the tattoo come after this accident? It did and um, my tattoo says Kia Kaha and that means forever strong. And it was given to me by a special friend who's from New Zealand and she gave it to me in the first week of my accident when I was in hospital and it really um, resonated with me and, and you know meant a lot to me so yeah I thought I'd get it tattooed on my arm and you know when I'm racing or training when I'm having a tough time I can you know be reminded that you know right. forever strong that I, I need to push on. And Laura for you what being you've been racing for CAF you got CAF on your kit now um, and watching what Laura has accomplished how what has that meant to you? Oh, it's just been inspirational. Um, I think, again, that first weekend in San Diego when we went to the try, um, you know, I'd had some involvement with CAF in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Right. Um, but I'd never been to the San Diego event. And, and going and, and, and going with Lauren was just a massive eye-opener to what was possible and how life can be after such horrible incidents. And I think, like Lauren said, just everyone was so happy and smiling and so supportive and wanted to help Lauren and wanted to help each other. And... That was really amazing for me as well. And, and to be able to participate in, in the try. And, we, and then last year we went back and we did pretty much the whole thing, I think, together. Um, she outswims me still. <laughs> um, um, but it's, it's been amazing. And I think for me, just to try and share part of what she's achieving, um, particularly as she builds up to like the Commonwealth Games and the medals and, and Tokyo in such a short amount of time, the strength and determination that she's had to turn things around, get straight back out, training um, as a paratriathlete, and what she's achieved is just, it's just inspiring. So, Lauren, what was your first race as a paratriathlete? First race was a, a race down in Australia in Victoria, St Kilda. It, was, it happened to be the, f uh, the qualifier for the Commonwealth Games. And that was your was first my race? First, my first one. I didn't expect to qualify for the Commonwealth Games after that race, but I did, I, um, yeah, qualified. And then my second race was the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> and that was, again, less than a year after you were injured. Yeah, 11 months after. And that's the uh, hardest part when people go through an injury like this is a spiraling depression of, of not knowing what's next. And the fact that you were able to get in the sport right away, do you think that helped? Definitely, like I, I believe that sport and triathlon saved me. Uh, it, it it was my life and still is my life and having sport you know like a, having sport in my life just means means so much it takes my mind away from my injury and you know yeah i can't ex i can't explain it yeah I, I i totally get it and i'm sure at this point there's other people reaching out to you whose daughters or sons are going through what you went through and and i know there was a point you're a, a T12, which means you have abs, and the doctor originally told you you were lucky, right? You weren't feeling very lucky at the time. No. So when parents are telling you the different levels that their child is, is at, you have that street cred to say, you know what, there's, you're going to be fine. You're yeah. going to be able to do whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, there's always people worse off than, than yourself. And, you know, when I was told uh, by the doctor that, you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a lucky one. I'm, I'm at T12. I've got the use of my arms. There's, when I went to rehab, I quickly realized that I was lucky because there was 
you know, young kids in there without the use of their arms and legs. Right. Toughest part about getting used to, because the hand cycle is sort of like a bicycle. The racing chair is unlike anything ever created, right? It's sort of a torture chamber. You're sort of scrunched up. How hard was it to get used to being in a racing chair? Yeah, the racing chair is very, very technical, and you need to spend months and, and months and years getting used to the correct technique. And at, at, at the start, I was really terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I've worked really hard on it, and I'm slowly getting there. Uh, but it's still my weakest leg in the triathlon. But um, being squashed up in, the, in there is really uncomfortable. So when you go to the World Championships in Lausanne, were you thinking gold medal? Uh, yeah, that was my goal. Yeah. I, I was definitely thinking gold medal, and the, the course absolutely suited me. Challenging uh, bike. Yeah, so a it was real very swim. hilly uh, on, the, on the bike, and it was a really flat run, which, which, which is good. I wanted as well. And, yeah, I, I you know, put a lot of hard work into that race over 12 months. So to come away with that gold medal and, and have my goal fulfilled is you know i couldn't ask for anything more i was so happy and a year less than a year from now is the paralympics what is the path for you is there a qualifying procedure for you there is so the qualifying period started in june of this year and it ends june next year and it's a it's a points system so the top three races within that year goes into the points tally right at the moment i'm ranked number one in the paralympic uh qualification tally so yeah it's um promising i love that and and laura where were you when you heard that she won the world I was glued to uh, glued to the live stream, screaming at it, <laughs> and watching her race, or trying to watch as much as the coverage as possible. So, yeah, I, I was jumping around the room on watching it on the TV. And that that bond between the two of you is you you do you follow her when she's racing here? Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah I love following Laura, and um, I'll be out there cheering her on on Saturday. She says that she just wants the holiday in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then after. You go and win the gold medal next year. No, just yeah. just saying. Uh, that event is August, I think. At and the end of August. End yeah. of August, yeah. and this is October. So you, you do want to come back here and do this again. Definitely, yeah. And uh, next year, they're six weeks apart. And oh, you've noticed. Yep. yep. Don't I put want to be back idea. here next year. <laughs> That'd be so cool. So I'll race the Paralympics and then Then Kona. hopefully, yeah. hopefully Kona. Yeah. And then there's also 70.3 Worlds in New Zealand. There is, yeah. <laughs> so I'll just add another one to my, to my year. What the hell? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Laura Siddle, Lauren Parker, Pancho Man. Take us out. <laughs> And Pancho Man. <laughs>